So a parallel moves in a straight line so that at any instance its acceleration is uh, uh, its acceleration and magnitude is half its velocity. Okay. If its initial velocity is three meters per second, find correct to one desk place the distance described in the fifth second. Okay, the distance in the fifth second. Now, go write down what we know here. Okay, so the second the acceleration a acceleration equals a half your velocity. Warford acceleration is the second derivative of distance with respect to time. That equals uh, a half uh, v. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, another way of saying acceleration is to v dt. That equals a half v. Now we have to see if this differential equation will do us. Do we have enough information on it? Paragraph is a straight line so that any instance of acceleration in magnitude is half its velocity. Okay, if its initial velocity is 3, find correct to one decimal place the distance described in the fifth second. Okay, initial velocity is v, this means that uh, the v to t, that means t equals 0 because it's initial velocity. Okay, then we get v equals v, t equals t. Okay, so we can actually integrate this, there's no need for anything else. Now we want the distance it describes in the fifth second, so we actually do want, we want s at the end of this, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find out v in terms of t. When we know what v is, we know that v is the s dt. So once we find v in terms of t, we're then going to have the s dt in terms of t. And then we can integrate one more time and find s in terms of t. Then from the distance in the fourth second, uh, the distance covered after four seconds, the distance covered after five seconds, and take those two numbers away from each other, and we should get the distance travelled in the fifth second. We'll run through it now, okay? So the v to t is a half v. Uh, cross multiply, we're going to get a. No, I say bring out down the v, we're going to get a half the v equals uh, a half to t integrate both sides the lower limit is uh, 0 and 3 the upper limit is v and t integrate and what we should get is ln v from v to 3 equals uh, a half t okay half t from t to 0 now what's going to happen next is we're going to get ln v minus ln 3 equals a half t then we're going to get ln v over 3 equals a half t now I want to isolate v because remember it's v in terms of t and then whatever my answer is I'm going to change v into the sdt so what we should get here is we're going to get a v over 3 equals uh, e to the power of a half t because that's what log is, it's log to the base e then we're going to get v equals 3 e to the half t ok next step replace v with the s dt that equals 3 e to the power of a half t now remember when t equals 0, s equals 0, and we know that uh, v was 3. Let's integrate again. So what we're going to get is uh, the integral of the s equals uh, 3 e to the power of a half t uh, by the t. And then we're integrating both sides. Uh, t and s on s and t on top and two zeros in the bottom let's see where this takes us now uh, we're going to get s from s to zero and then we're going to get integrate this okay e to the power of a half t is the first thing to come back down when you differentiate that 
you're going to end up multiplying whatever number you have in front by a half this means it has to be six because when you when you differentiate that the half goes to the front multiplies by the six turns it back into three okay and that's from I'm going to do a slightly different way this time okay than the book I'm going to do uh, t and zero here and what we're going to get is s equals s equals uh, 6 e to the half t now it wants the distance described in the, si the f fifth second right so if you're to look at this zero to one is the first second one to two is the second second two to three is the third second three to four is the fourth second huh oh sorry it is excuse me you're right six e to the power of zero would usually cancel off but e to the power of zero is six you're right well done Gert. okay now this is our formula here now, what I'm describing here is, if we find out the distance covered after 4 seconds, if we find the distance covered after 4 seconds, then find the distance covered after 5 seconds, take both answers away from each other, we find the distance in the 5th second. So, what we can do here is, uh, S equals 6E to the half times 5. Put that into the calculator, what will we get? This is S5, the distance covered after 5 seconds. I suppose we can keep it in terms of V, can't we? Well, you have to keep the minus 6 then. Sorry? We do, yes. So it's going to be 6E to the power of 5 over 2 minus 6. S4 is going to be 6E to the half times 4 minus 6, which is going to be 6E to the 2 minus six can you take s5 minus s4 away from each other please and what we should get is six e to the five over two minus six minus six e two minus six and what do we get Twenty-eight point seven. Twenty-eight point seven. Six meters. Or the way they left it in the book is they just left it like this. Okay. Now there was potentially another way of doing this. Okay. I'm just going to let you know this other way because you might be seeing it in solutions elsewhere. Now. The other way of doing this was to go back up to your limits in the first place and see where I did this. Okay? What I could have done instead was I could have said that the top limit is 5, the bottom limit is 4, and this automatically means that whatever your s value is here, it's going to be the difference, it's going to be the difference between the distance traveled in 4 seconds and 5 seconds. So you could have done your limits straight away. You actually see it's the same thing, don't you? We replace in 5 for t, then we replace in 4 for t, take them away from each other. So it's actually the exact same thing. Okay, just be aware that if you see it in the limits, done in the limits, it's just another way of doing it. Okay? Any questions on that one? Number 6. A particle of mass 2 kilograms starts from rest and is accelerated, acted on by a force. This force increases uniformly, or linearly, in 80 seconds from 0 to 20. Prove after t seconds the particle begins to move. After the particle begins to move, its acceleration is t over a. Now, if you're to draw a force time diagram, now this is highly unusual because you haven't done anything like this in differentiation. Okay. Now, what you're going to realize is that it's a straight line. What, why is it a straight line? Because it says that it increases uniformly. Okay? Pargal starts from rests and is acted on, a, acted on by a force. 
okay, which increases uniformly in 80 seconds from zero. So we know it starts at zero, and then we know it goes all the way up to 20. And we know the bottom goes from zero all the way to 80. Okay. Now, prove after t seconds that the power group begins to move acceleration is t over a. Okay. Force equals uh, trying to take now, right? It's the equation of a line, so it's going to be mx plus c. Okay. Now, if this is force on the x-axis and t on the y-axis, okay, what does that mean? It's how how the force is increasing over time. Okay. So the force is increasing over time at a uh, What's that going to be? That's 80 on the y-axis. Oh, sorry, 20 on the y-axis, 80 in the x-axis. So the slope of this graph is 20 over 80, which is a quarter. Okay? So force equals a quarter t plus zero. All that that is, is y equals mx plus c. It's expressing force in terms of time. Okay, now that you have force in terms of time, uh, we need to find its acceleration. Okay, force equals ma, which in fact is 2a. 2a equals a quarter t, therefore a has to be a 1 eighth t, which is what we're asked to do. Okay, prove that when the particle has moved to distance s, its speed is v where 9s squared equals 8v cubed. Okay, a equals an 8t. Now, it wants s in terms of v. Yeah? Now what do we know about the whole, what, what limits do we know about the full system? We know t is zero when, s is zero when, V is zero. Everything starts from rest, doesn't it? Next thing is we know t equals t equals t basically s equals s and v equals v. It's, the second set of limits has nothing in it. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? We're probably gonna have to go through the VDT. The VDT equals an eight t. Why isn't V the VDS open to me at the moment. Why can't I just go, jump straight into this equation and use it instead of the VDT? I have no equation with S in it. Okay, and and uh, basically we have to stick with the VDT first. Stick with the VDT, find out what F V is in terms of T, then maybe change it to uh, DS afterwards, okay? So, what we're going to do now, integrate both sides, we're going to get a, I suppose we can cross multiply this, 8 dv equals dt, integrate both sides, uh, 0, 0, v, t, what we're going to get is 8v equals, uh, is that the number 1 isn't it, in front of the t? Alright, it's just dt, isn't it? It's meant to be attempted dt. Okay. T dt. There we go. Now we're going to get t squared over 2. t to 0. This one here is v to 0. Then we're just going to get 8v equals t squared over 2. v therefore is v is t squared over 16. Okay, now let's look back up the top. What do you have to play around with? All right. Now, this is number six, right? Okay, number six. Now we know what phi is. 
v is t squared over 16. Now we know that the sdt, the sdt is t squared over 16. Cross multiply that, 16 ds equals uh, 16 ds equals t squared dt. Now we still haven't figured out, we still haven't figured out how this is going to link in at the end, okay? But what we can do is we might be substituting in at the end, so we might be able to substitute in v for t squared over 16 at the end. So that's probably what we're looking to do. Once again, t to 0, s to 0, integrate. And what we should get this term is uh, 16s from s to 0. 16s from s to 0 equals uh, a third t cubed from t to 0. Now, that basically means you can just get rid of the brackets and cross multiply. So we're going to get s equals t cubed over 48. Now, t cubed over 48. We have two equations, and okay, these are our two equations. We didn't want, we don't want, uh, we want s in terms of v. So this is where our problem lies. What we need to do is we need to isolate t and get rid of it. So I'm going to start off with the one that has the lower power. I'm going to say t squared equals 16 v, therefore t equals 4 v to the power of a half. When you square root the full thing, it's the square root of 16, which is 4, the square root of v, which is v to the power of a half. I'm next going to substitute that into the equation here. So we're going to get 4 v to the power of a half to the power of 3, all over 48. And what should happen here is s will equal... 4 to the power of 3 is 64 and this is going to be v to the power of 3 over 2 all over 48. What's 64 divided by 48? 8, 6 which is 4 over 3 4 over 3 now 4 over 3 now, does it want v cubed or v squared? It wants v cubed. How do I turn this into v cubed? Square both sides. So what I'm going to get is s squared equals 16 over 9. 16 over 9. Uh, that's going to turn into v3. And is that what I'm looking for? 9s squared equals 16 v cubed should be 8 but it's a misprint it should be 16 <laughs> no it actually is and that's your answer to that one